Hi, welcome to Virtual Bedtime Stories. I'm Aunt Amy, and I'm here to read you another story. And as always, I have my fluffy blanket that I like to have when I read. And I have my sparkly crown that I like because reading makes me feel like a queen. And I have my sparkly glasses so that I can see the book. But today, I don't have my bear because he is off visiting his family in the Swiss Alps. But next time, he'll be back with us. So today, I want to read you a book. And this is another book about our friend Lily. You might remember her from the video that I read you, Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. And this is a video about Lily getting a baby brother. And this book is called Julius, Baby of the World by Kevin Henkes. All right, let's see what it says. Lily says, you mean that bump is going to be a baby? I thought you were just getting fat like Aunt Mona. Do you know anybody that's pregnant and is going to have a baby? Maybe you have a baby brother or sister. So this is all about when Lily got a baby brother. Before Julius was born, Lily was the best big sister in the world. She gave him things. She told him secrets. And she sang him lullabies every night. These are for the baby. She's being a very good big sister. After Julius was born, it was a different story. Lily took her things back. She pinched his tail and she yelled insulting comments into his crib. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes. And they stroked his sweet white fur. Lily thought his wet pink nose was slimy. She thought his small black eyes were beady. And she thought his sweet white fur was not so sweet. Especially when he needed his diaper changed. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. I don't think she likes him very much, do you? Lily had to share her room with Julius. After Julius goes away, do I get my room back, she asked. Julius isn't going anywhere, said Lily's mother. And he didn't. He stayed and stayed and stayed. Lily was supposed to be very quiet while Julius slept. After Julius goes away, can I talk like a normal person again, she shouted. Julius isn't going anywhere, said Lily's father. And he didn't. He stayed and stayed and stayed. We want Julius to grow up to be as extraordinary as you, said Lily's mother. So we must tell him constantly how beautiful he is and how much we love him. When no one was looking, Lily had her own idea. I hate you. You're ugly. We want Julius to grow up to be as clever as you, said Lily's father. So we must sing him his numbers and letters whenever possible. When no one was looking, Lily had her own ideas. 381596, A-J-K-Z-B-S-C-H. She's trying to trick Julius. Lily's parents were more than a bit doubtful about leaving the two of them alone together. Lily tried to frighten Julius with her nifty disguises. 
She learned magic and she tried to make him disappear. When that didn't work, she simply pretended that he didn't exist. Baby? What baby? I don't hear anything. Lily spent more than more time than usual in the uncooperative chair. I hate everything. Lily's parents showered her with hugs and kisses and treats of all shapes and sizes. They even let her stay up 15 minutes later every night. It didn't matter. Nothing worked. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes, and they stroked his sweet white fur. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. Lily's parents were amused when Julius blew a bubble. Can you believe it, they exclaimed. But if Lily did the exact same thing, they said, Lily, let's mind our manners, please. Lily's parents were dazzled when Julius babbled and gurgled. Gaga ma moo. Such a vocabulary, they exclaimed. But if Lily did the exact same thing, they said, Lily, let's act our age, please. Lily's parents were amazed when Julia screamed. Ah! What lung capacity, they exclaimed. But if Lily did the exact same thing, they said, Lily, let's restrain ourselves, please. One morning when Liz Lily was busy playing opera, her mother said, why don't you put some of that verbal exuberance to good use? Why don't you tell Julius a nice story? He's too little to understand a story, said Lily. He can understand it in his own way, said Lily's mother. Okay, said Lily, smiling. Julius, the germ of the world, by me, said Lily. Once upon a time, said Lily, there was a baby. His name was Julius. Julius was really a germ. Julius was like dust under your bed. If he was a number, he would be a zero. If he was a food, he would be a raisin. Zero is nothing. A raisin tastes like dirt. The end. The story earned her Ten minutes in the uncooperative chair. Lily warned her friends Chester and Wilson and Victor about babies. Trust me, they're dreadful, she said. She warned strangers about babies, too. You will regret that bump under your dress, she said. Lily ran away seven times in one morning. I'm really leaving this time, she called. Who knows where they'll find me? That same afternoon, Lily had a tea party and everyone came, everyone but Julius. His invitation must have been lost in the mail, she explained. Lily had glorious dreams about Julius. Oh my gosh, she's riding a big cat that's trying to kill Julius. And ghastly nightmares, too. Oh, my gosh, Julius is a big baby, and he's torturing Lily. Lily's parents showered her with compliments and praise and niceties of all shapes and sizes. They even let her drink her juice out of an antique china cup. It didn't matter. Nothing worked. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius, imposter baby, Julius, germ, my entire complete family, my new cup, Lily, mom, dad, that's all there is, really, no Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his sweet black eyes and they stroked his sweet white fur. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. 
When Lily's mother felt up to it, she planned a festive celebration in honor of Julius. All the relatives came. There was quite a spread. What's the big deal, said Lily. Haven't they all seen a silly lump before? Apparently not. All afternoon, the relatives hovered over Julius. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes, and they stroked his sweet white fur. Disgusting, said Cousin Garland. What, said Lily? Julius, said Cousin Garland. I think his wet pink nose is slimy. I think his small black eyes are beady. And I think his sweet white fur is not so sweet. He needs his diaper change. Lily's nose twitched. Her eyes narrowed. Her fur stood on end and her tail quivered. You're talking about my brother, said Lily. And for your information, his nose is shiny. His eyes are sparkly and his fur smells like perfume. Cousin Garland was speechless. He can blow bubbles, continued Lily. He can babble and gurgle. And he can scream better than anyone. Cousin Garland tried to slink out of the room. Stop, said Lily. I am the queen. Watch me closely. Lily picked up Julius. She kissed his wet pink nose. She admired his small black eyes, and she stroked his sweet white fur. Your turn, said Lily, handing Julius over to Cousin Garland. Kiss, admire, stroke, Lily commanded. Now repeat after me, said Lily. Julius is the baby of the world. Julius is the baby of the world, said Cousin Garland. Louder, said Lily. Julius is the baby of the world. And from then on he was, in everyone's opinion, especially in Lily's. We're almost twins, she said. Look, it looks like Angus came up to hear the story too. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I hope that you have a wonderful night's sleep. Bye-bye.